Hey, it's Ice T from Body Count, and you're watching Loudwire. Hey everyone, Graham from Loudwire here, and I'm joined by the OG, a pioneer of rap and metal, and my personal favorite Wikipedia fact or fiction guest of all time, Ice T. Thank you so we much for coming. We had fun on that. We had fun on that. I had so that. much fun. Yeah. 100 yeah. episodes. You're my favorite. Thank honest, you. honest. Thank you. And you know I love you. So I have to tell you something. Okay. I think you may have some anger issues. <laughs> You like institutionalized, huh? Well, even more so on this new record, you're talking about cutting people's faces off, wearing their yeah. dead skin to bed. Mm -hmm. A lot of good stuff in, uh, in Bloodlust, the new record, which you can pick up right now. Has this really been a release for your Absolutely. frustrations? I think art is. I think art as a whole. If you don't have that, a lot of people, even my wife tells me, she says, I don't really have that that outlet that you have with music, yeah. you know? So a lot of people have to go and find other ways to do it. Hopefully you don't hurt nobody in the process. But you know, things that bother me throughout the year, if it gets on my nerves, I'm like, that's a body count song. Yeah. Or that, that's something I should write about. And then I channel it through this music because metal kinda, kinda lends itself towards anger. It's loud, it's aggressive. It's kinda hard to make a loud love song. You True. Know? So, uh, I scream on it, and I, 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 I get pretty intense, but it kind of throws people off because they think when they meet me, I'm going to be walking around, you know, dragging a dead body or something. <laughs> and comparing this to Manslaughter, you know, Manslaughter's a great record. Yeah. This one is next level. Yeah. And when you compare the two, Manslaughter has a lot of fun tracks. Right. A lot of kind of lighthearted, you know, bitch in the pit, mm -hmm. talk shit, get shot, like lots of fun songs. This one, Deadly serious. Yeah, well, what happened was when we did Manslaughter, we hadn't done an album in like six years. Yeah. And I was just testing the water. So I was just making kind of like random records to see what the audience wanted and didn't really also see if my fan base was still alive because we had sold millions of records early with Body Count. Bloodlust was made during these last three years of wildness that has happened on Earth with the primaries, the elections, yeah. all the the madness that has happened in, in the United States, it was impossible to make a happy record. I mean, things were happening right now. I've lived through Bush, I've lived through Clinton, I've lived through Obama, I've lived through a few presidents, you know, even Reagan. Sure. Uh, I've never felt this tense. I've never felt this uneasiness. Maybe it's because of the internet and we're all communicating and we can actually see how everyone feels. Kind of like before the internet, you only knew how the people in your neighborhood felt. Sure. Now you know how the world feels. So we really had no options but to talk about those issues or we would make an album that would be so off target, people would say, Ice, what's, what world are you living in? And I try to hit all the different ways humans kill or hurt themselves, whether you're the serial killer, whether you're the robber, whether you're the politician. So all the songs still connect in the middle spoke, which is the human animal. Body Count has really hit a point where the metalheads truly care about the music, truly mm -hmm. care about your perspective mm -hmm. and what you're saying. And that puts you in a really unique situation mm -hmm. because you are able to sort of convey the black experience Absolutely. to a very... First hand. Sure. First hand. To a very uh, non-black audience. Right. And they're really intently listening, which is not always the case. Well, it's important. I think hip hop was the first music that reached white kids and said, look, look, check this out. We're not mad at you. We're mad at things. Yeah. And then the white kids like, guess what? I'm mad at the same shit. And that's where that allegiance started to come together. And when rock and roll first started, black people started it mm -hmm. and white kids were attracted to it. So, of course, there's forces that don't want this to happen, but the average kid doesn't hold that racial shit in there. It's like, just, just entertain me. Tell me about something I don't know. So, this album is strategically written. My boy calls it unfuckwithable. It's like, the, the angles I'm hitting these topics, you can't really argue them because sure. it's not slanted, it's not racist, it's just saying what the fuck it is. And you draw your own conclusions after it. So I'm glad, you know, I think right now, it takes a band like Body Count or somebody to make this kind of an album to maybe steer other groups. 
to say, hey, maybe we better sing about some shit. And you can really hear the frustration in a song like No Lives Matter when you're screaming, this is basic shit. Basic shit. It's basic shit. And, you know, racism is real. Yeah. But there's also a class situation that's going on out here where, you know, like I say, if a cop is in a gated community, he ain't got his hand on his gun because he knows these people, there's repercussions. But when he's in a poor neighborhood, whether it's the trailer park or my neighborhood, in the hood where I grew up, not where I live now, but in the hood, they quicker. Sure. Because there's no repercussions. <coughs> that adds up to statistics. That's all I'm saying. So, you know, whether you're the poor white kid they call trash, or you're, you're Spanish, or you're Asian, that has always referenced the poor. Let's all get on the same side of the team. You know, once we all realize we're mad at the same shit, we're unstoppable. We're unstoppable. You know, they, they can't fuck with us once we realize we're all on the same side. In a song like Black Hoodie, a lot of people could misconstrue that song as you being anti-cop. And that's not the case, right? Well, the song Black Hoodie, the way it's set up, I'm just telling you a story about somebody in the hood that got shot by a cop. But the, the last lyric says, uh, you, know, nobody, you know, nobody fucking marched. No one had a clue. This never made the news. I'm just saying, what you guys are marching about, this, ha this has been happening. This happens. And a lot of it doesn't make the news. But this is an occurrence that goes on, you know? And I'd say what the cops are gonna say is why the fuck he run, mm -hmm. you know? But I don't really, there's this one little man where we're yelling at the cops, but we're yelling at the cops because my man's down. You know, and how many times have you seen it where your man is down and they're like, no, no, no uh, ambulances. They're just still putting cuffs on him. Yeah. I'm like, so it's, 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 it's a poke at the cops, but it's not as raw as something like Cop Killer back in the days where we just saying, you know, this guy lost his mind, he's going after him. Um, this is just a way of saying, this is the type of stuff that's going on, how are we gonna deal with it? <laughs>